Good afternoon, everybody. Now I'm going to start with the introduction of AI. What is AI? What do you think about? In fact, the most popular interpretation of AI, perhaps is AI enables machines, computers, to behave like a human. And uh, the best example is a robot. A robot can run like a human and even move things from one place to other places and talk to us. And uh, also AI can play chess and go even beat the world championship. And uh, in science fiction, we fall in love in robots, fall in love in AI machines. But I recommend you not do now because I think you will be get bored at sh after a very short time. And uh, the second uh, explanation, what is AI, is actually very serious. I think we cannot live without AI today. We use search machine. We use Google Translate. And uh, almost every day, who is using search machine every day? Even every minute, and also Google Translate. And in this example, in my slides, you can see kids can use Virtual reality, augmented reality, they can play games at home and experience desert. And they can use their mobile phones without go entering the shops or at restaurants, know what is behind the shops and the windows. We cannot, we cannot live without AI anymore. And AI is even stronger than us humans. We cannot translate 15 languages. We cannot search in documents, millions of documents, in many seconds. And the third one is AI can help us to communicate with the machine in a very natural way. We can talk to the machine. Some, some of you use smart speaker. You can ask for the weather, for the news, and also let them wake us up and play songs for us. AI helps human and machine interaction. And why is AI so hot, so important? We observe considerable progresses in the last few years with respect to data. You heard the panel discussion about big data and the machine learning, in particular deep learning, and the knowledge technologies. Without knowledge, without domain knowledge, common sense knowledge, our machine cannot be smart enough. And of course, internet technologies and hardware technology, high performance computing, GPU servers, CPU servers, all they contribute the progresses with AI technologies and commercialization. And as I tell you, Superman performance, Google Translate, search machine, AlphaGo, driverless cars, many of us are scared, in particular in Germany. <laughs> and uh, whether AI will replace us humans, I tell you, just be cool. I don't think AI can replace humans. I think AI will help us and live with us together. Even from technology point of view, I think AI technology are not yet so far. Let's observe the developments of machine learning approach in the last few years. You can see, we ha I, have, I put two parameters, explainability and uh, prediction accuracy. And uh, if you look at the decision tree, decision tree has very good explainability but lower performance, prediction accuracy. And who will be the position for deep learning? What do you think? Where should deep learning be placed in this picture? Deep learning is there. Deep learning has the best prediction accuracy, but the lowest explainability. But we know when we human work with each other, even we live, we have to explain, make other people understand. If AI solutions should contribute to decisions, forecasts, AI solutions should be able to explain and make their black box transparent. Therefore, as far as explainability not yet solved, machines are still machines and cannot replace us human and even difficult to work for us as human. Now I emphasize explainable AI because I think it's it will be the next big challenges for AI research and the solutions. We human, we acquire explicit knowledge in the school, and we have experience and intuition. Often you see, why you like this person? 
I, think, I don't know, it's God's feeling. In the first meeting, if we enter this conference, we meet uh, first time, we, can, we have only God's feeling. Some people like you like them immediately. Sometime, sometimes you avoid some person immediately too. Therefore, we have explicit knowledge and implicit knowledge. But humans, we can combine the two forms of knowledge you know, to a certain degree. And the, but understanding and explaining require both explicit knowledge in humans. Explicit knowledge is very important. And uh, in our normal everyday life for work, and uh, also we have to uh, explain and understand each other. And if we look at uh, AI research and the approaches, we can observe deep learning, deep neural networks, DNS. They acquire and use implicit knowledge from data in the form of probabilistic models, but they are dumb system. They cannot understand anything. And, uh, and in, the, in the parallel, there are another group of researchers and also approach, there are AI methods. They model explicit knowledge, namely knowledge graphs, and the, which kind of relationship between entities, which company produce which products, all this kind of explicit knowledge. Today, these two words in AI technology are still separate. And the next big challenge for us as AI research and developers, and also for companies who want to do commercialization, is to bring these two worlds together. Now, my task is also to come here to share with you my impression of global AI competition and effort. And uh, I consider these uh, factors of, uh, re very relevant for AI competition. Data, no-brainer. But I think also knowledge is important. Domain knowledge, common sense knowledge. And uh, in order to build good system, do research, we need good AI engineers and researchers, namely talents. And also, in order to push the innovation, we need money. We need a creative and very active venture investment and risk management. Other people who support risks and innovation and uh, the fourth factor is also government. We have the panel discussion of government. Government can make all these factors even more effective. If we look at uh, uh, the AI, why the AI is important, since 2016, October, US government was the first government released a national AI strategy. Follow US government, Japan, China in 2017 in July, and other countries, many European countries, and also EU release national strategy. If I, I'm so happy as AI scientists and technology, I think national strategy, strategies are important, but who will win the battle? Who will make the biggest contribution to their country and to the society is the decision and the way how to implement strategies and in a quick, quick way. And uh, I also want to share with you, this is a, a forecast from European Commission about the additional GDP through AI by 2030. This will be 15.7 trillion US dollar. And uh, where will the tri this 15.7 trillion US dollar distributed? You will see China will be almost 50% of this 15.7. AI will have very big impact in China, and the second in North America, and then in Europe. Let me, two years ago, I moved from Berlin to Beijing. Now what I want to share with you, AI in China. And uh, I mentioned also venture capital is very important for innovation, for AI. And in 2017, almost 48 percent, almost 50 percent of the venture capital went to China for startup companies. Very impressive, amazing. I'm, I will be very happy. Part of them come to Berlin, to Germany. <laughs> and these numbers are even more impressive. If, you, if we look at the AI companies in China, there are 14 Chinese AI companies are unicorns, value at 1 billion US dollar or more. And these unicorns, these 14 companies, has a worth of combined 14, 40 points, 
five billion U.S. dollar. And uh, in 2017, as I mentioned, Chinese AI startups raised 27.7 billion U.S. dollar, while 369 VC deals. And this number don't include uh, technology giants like Alibaba and DD Tencent, these companies, iFlatech. Now I spent two years time in Beijing, and uh, I want to share how many companies, AI companies in Beijing. In 2017, Beijing had more than 1,000 AI companies. And in, two, in May 2018, Beijing had 1,237 uh, uh, AI companies with venture capital investment. Impressive numbers. And if we look at special areas, just look at the commercialization of robotics. Xinhua News in May 2018 reported there are more than 6,500 robotic companies in China. Impressive, amazing. And, but if, as an AI scientist educated in Germany, you look at exactly what these companies are doing, you will be a little relaxed. This <laughs> these companies focus more on low-end market service. Perhaps it's not so boring for us, huh? for, all, for, for German companies. They mainly focus on service, toys, civilians, education, but still big market, very big market. And uh, China has the largest number of deployed industry robots, but most of them are imported from Germany. Perhaps. <laughs> now, I'm, since I'm under time pressure too, uh, I'm closing with the uh, outlook. I think in many areas where China are very good, because China has a lot of data, big market, a lot of users, and uh, for example, in computer vision, face recognition, I think Europe, as far as I can observe, also from the research in my lab, Europe does not have a chance to compete, but we can work with Chinese companies and uh, solutions. But the, the age of AI is just beginning. We should not be so nervous, but we should act now. And Europe is very good, has big, great chances in future complex technology paradigm, such as combination of knowledge and uh, deep learning, as I mentioned, exploring AI, if we can f create solutions to, for enterprises and um, complex solutions, useful solutions for mission critical use cases, the combination of knowledge and the machine learning is very important. And uh, in Europe, in particular in Germany, even in Berlin at the Technical University of Berlin, we have very good researchers in experimental AI. And also in complex industry applications, Germany is famous for Industry 4.0. Now I want to share with you, with more optimistic, the opportunities. Enterprise AI, I think we have opportunities. In business intelligence, I think SAP is working hard on it. <laughs> Intelligent enterprise, also smart manufacturing, very, very important. And then for the robotics, as I mentioned, this start with low technology, we can focus on high technologies, self-improving robots, cooperative, cooperative robots, autonomous robots. And then the last two opportunities, but only uh, some examples, also in healthcare areas, intelligent prevention, AI-supported diagnostics, personalized therapy. Still, in e-health area, I think all of the world are face big challenges because of privacy issues and also smart energy, mobility, optimized transportation, energy management, virtual mobility concepts. Thank you very much. So, um, sorry. So, uh, what kind of role does Lenovo play in all of this? Uh, uh, 
the uh, AI lab at Lenovo was established since 2017 when I went to Beijing. And uh, the AI technology, Lenovo, like many other global enterprises, has at least three uh, roles. I simplify as three pros. One is uh, for the own products and services. For each company, AI solutions, if like Lenovo, we produce PCs, mobile phones, smart devices. We can make our devices more smarter with human machine interaction, better services. This is one thing. Pro, for products and services, upgrade, make more smarter. And also, AI technologies can improve our own processes. Mm -hmm. For example, supply chain management, logistics, and uh, customer care. Uh, AI Lab has developed a uh, customer care chatbot system, can automatically un answer questions of our customers in North America 24 hours, seven days. And our human agents cannot do it. And it saves also a lot of money. And also, we serve the, our customers in Indian too. And the third one, I see, is uh, po um, promotion. If a company, I think uh, uh, Google and also IBM, Baidu, they uh, show us good examples. If you show, you can do AlphaGo. This company is cool. I think AI technologies and solutions uh, show a kind of a marketing strategy for a new marketing strategy. Mm. Therefore, for products, for process, and for promotion. Mm. And uh, uh, Lenovo is working on these three pros. I think you're really a rock star. You really did a great job. Give it up, ladies and gentlemen, for... Perfect. Thank you so much.